Hey all, Board Game Lance here, where you'll find everything solo tabletop gaming and more the best of the decade. My picks for the best solo tabletop game and the best designer coming right up. To offer you some quick reference, if you've never heard of me before, I have been tabletop gaming for a very long time, solo tabletop gaming for probably the better part of two decades back when all you really had as an option was to take a game out and play it two players by yourself. Then of course, Board Game Geek came along and a lot of fan-made solo variants started coming out. It became more and more of a thing that grew kind of slowly and now has kind of become an avalanche to my greatest delight. It is now becoming a hobby all of its own. I've been running this channel now for the better part of two years, and you can find me also at the podcast, Instagram, find me on Twitter, Facebook. Of course, here I have a lot of videos as well. And to give you a reference of why these might be my favorite games, because we all have different tastes. Some people like lighter games. Some people like war games. I'm going to give you two lists. These two lists are going to have the designers that I'm kind of most familiar with, and I picked 10 of them, and then the games that I'm most familiar with. That way, too, you can see, because my favorite is going to be different than someone else's experience who prefers different types of games. Now, I've played a lot of games, and I'm only going to mention, again, 10 designers and 10 games, but I've played hundreds of games just over this past decade, let alone the decade before that. But there's also some games here too that are kind of over 10 years old. But solo gaming has really only gotten any traction, I would say, these past 10 years. And, and it's been great traction. So I'll put these in show notes below as well so you can see them. Here are the designers that I considered for best designer of the decade. Alexander Pfister, Martin Wallace, Vita Lacerda, Count to make sure I got them all. Reiner Knizia, Lodge Vettel, Yuya Rosenberg. I could also just look at my list. Stefan Feld, Jamie Stegmeier, Josh and Adam Carlson, and Antoine Bowser. And I apologize if I messed up any of those names. I think I got all 10 of them there. Then, as far as the games that I considered Scythe, Nemesis, Gaia Project, Anachrony, too Many Bones, Spirit Island, Race for the Galaxy, Space Alert, Mage Knight, and Gloomhaven. If I did that correctly, there's 10 and 10. You'll find them in the show notes. To keep this as succinct as possible, I think I will just stick with my favorite thing about each one. My favorite game and my favorite thing about the designer. My favorite game out of the 10 listed there. All marvelous solo games, or just marvelous games, genre-defining games, whatever. Fantastic games. My number one solo game of all time, still, and kind of by far, I would still say. And I don't see it really ever changing, because it's been this way for damn near a decade. It's many people's favorite solo tabletop game. And if you go on Board Game Geek and you go to One Player Guild, it was just unseated as the number one game <clears throat> by one of the games that I mentioned here. And that game is Mage Knight. Mage Knight, I find it interesting actually because I think most people, or many people, or at least for myself, I, I, I come from a very strong kind of, I enjoyed reading fantasy fiction. And games always appealed to me. And I don't know if that's just because it's just kind of that uh, nerdy vibe thing that I got going on for myself. And, you know, when people like to read the books and the fantasy books, you must like playing board games. Because I was always perceived as kind of a nerd. It's fine. I don't know. And I like what I like. And so Mage Knight, of course, fits that for me. Fits that fantasy vibe for me. You'll notice, too, a lot of the games I mentioned are pretty fairly heavy games. I like heavier games. I like fantasy themed games. And one thing I very much like 
and is my favorite thing about Mage Knight. And there's tons to say about Mage Knight and why it's why it's my favorite. But again, to keep it short and sweet, my favorite thing, especially as compared to other games, there's no game out there that I've ever played that gives me the sense of progression in such a relatively short period of time. Mage Knight is not a short game. My sweet spot for games really is I like a good hour, hour and a half. But Mage Knight is the one game I make the exception because, because of what it does. Because you'll go from, you start off as this lowly little Mage Knight with very few abilities. And you come across your first orc. And, and you're agonizing because you know it's just like, yeah, I just try to kill this little orc. I'm going to get hit a couple times. I'm going to take a couple wounds. They're already, I mean, from the very beginning, it's just like you can't even kill an orc without getting hit. By the end of the game, two, three hours later, your character has developed into a beast. And you have an arsenal of other characters that you've, you've gathered and you're commanding. And now you're going from hardly able to, to defeat an orc to wiping out entire cities of very high, you know, dragons and golems and whatever in a single round. It's the most satisfying feeling in gaming that I can imagine or ever even try to describe. And it happens, like I said, in two to three hours, which is a long game, but where you start from and where you end up with, there's no game out there in such a short period of time that gives me such a sense of satisfying progression and completion than Mage Knight. Because there's tons of games out there that allow you to level up and allow you to, you know, and then there's campaign games and, well, we've got all sorts of, there's tons of games in the genre, but none of them do this for me. None of them, and this is this game is old. This game is a 10 year old game and there's still no game out there like it. And it's my favorite now and it's gonna be my favorite, I think, for a very long time, unless, unless the designer comes out with another similar type game. So what is my favorite designer of the decade? Well, I guess, you'd probably be able to guess that because, but, and I'll also tell you why <clears throat> it is my number one designer. And that would be the designer of Mage Knight, Vladish Fatel. But not just because you might think, well, of course he is. He made your favorite game. Well, yes and no. <laughs> the other consideration though, is that of all those other names that I listed, they're all good at something. They're all fantastic. And they're not just good at something. They are like, the, the trendsetters for what they're good at. You know, a Yuri Rosenberg game, you know, from Agricola, let's say, and you look at all the games that have come out, he's made a lot of games, but they all have that thing. I mean, so many of them, you know, have that, I, I don't know, that worker placement resource conversion thing that he does. And then you look at, I don't know, Steffenfeld, and you think point salad, you know, that's what he does. The single biggest reason Vladish Fatel is my, I believe, is, is the best designer, my favorite, is because you look at the games that he's done. There is no game design that he's like known for excelling at. He just makes masterful game designs that are entirely different through the ages. How is through the ages one of the best civilization games, heaviest civilization board games out there. How does that have anything to do with code names? Same designer, but you would never guess it. Some other game, Space Alert. It's like a real time cooperative game out in space, very tense. And then again, you go to Through the Ages, you would never guess they have any, the designer, the same designer had anything to do with those games. Then you go to code names. Then you go to a game like, I don't know, I've got some, I've got some over here. 
I don't know, I'm kind of blanking on other games he's made. Galaxy Trucker. Galaxy Trucker. I don't have that, but I played it. These have a lot of these games have apps for them. Or Dungeon Lords. Again, another game that just has now Dungeon Lords and Dungeon Pets. He created both his games. They look the same and they kind of have a similar vibe. It's the same kind of storyline theme. But those are the only two games where like one came after the other and you'd go, oh yeah, well that's, you know, it looks just like this game. You might guess that. But all these other games, somehow he just makes these, these magnificent games that are like almost all critically acclaimed staples in their own rights. And I would never guess that they're all designed by the same individual. That is what makes, for me, Vladis Fatel the very best in solo tabletop game design. Not just solo tabletop game, this the best game designer on the planet because I don't know that anybody has that level of imagination and ability to create such different games that are all so extremely well designed. There you have it, for better or worse. Thank you so much for joining me. Please look for me if you're interested in solo tabletop gaming. Look for me on all these other platforms out there. Let me know what your thoughts are, certainly down below on these selections. I'd love to hear from you. And until next time, I'm Board Game Rants, and I'm out.